The AI narrative is about to explode. And if you get in now, you can get in before this thing pumps to Valhalla. And yes, it's not every day that the markets give you a crystal ball to see into the future. But today, we have proof that the AI narrative is literally going to be insane this summer. So guys, if you're excited to learn exactly why, the dates of when we expect these things to pop off, and what coins I'm looking at, stay around if you're excited for that. Do me a favor, destroy that like button, and if you're new to the channel, what's up? My name is Kyle. I've been in crypto for 12 years. What up? My goal here on this channel is to bring you guys all the alpha so you have as much knowledge and insight as possible to make the best decisions that you can for this bull market. And also, we're going to try to teach you how to keep that as well. But remember, guys, nothing here is financial advice. I'm just a guy behind a computer doing stuff. Um, and without further ado, let's get into it and talk about this, uh, this crystal ball we got here. So as we do on this channel, we're going to go a few minutes, five, five minutes of macro stuff because it's important to understand what the, what the big picture looks like. And then we're going to get into the, uh, the, the altcoin section after that. So Bitcoin, we, I think it was a lot of fear. Remember, we talked about this turnaround here and bam, bounce off this. And now what we want to see is we want to see this thing making uh, higher lows. So we would like to see maybe a little console little bounce back here. But at the end of the day, we are still within this chop zone over here. So again, before the markets will, will get you. So be careful. Don't get, there, get, get greedy now. Uh, still, the dollar cost averaging that we've talked about for a while is probably the best strategy. I still don't have any crazy longs open right now or shorts or anything. I'm just placing my bets where I think things are going to pop off soon. What blew my mind on, on I think it was Friday, was Grayscale stopped selling. They bought. Look at this. First day in ETF history that Grayscale wasn't just hemorrhaging blood. And not only did they buy, but others bought. A fair amount. Not only did the U.S. buy, but Hong Kong did as well. Yeah, you can see this great scale sort of looks like a, a, like a graph. Finally, this is just hemorrhaging, 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 blah, 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 sell, and then beep. Bullish. I, I was, I, I couldn't even believe it when I saw that. It blew my mind. But U.S. isn't the only ones buying. Hong Kong, slowly but surely, the majority of the accumulation was day one, but you can see it's still accumulating. Now it has acquired 4,200 Bitcoin, that is off the market, off the market. So we've talked a little bit. So now if you're watching this channel all the time, you're getting a good perspective on macroeconomics, which is important for understanding the markets, right? And this is pretty cool. You can see that we talked about uh, last week about the M2 money supply flipping positive for the first time since 2022. And on a chart over here, I'll show you in a second, this is a crypto total three, meaning uh, everything excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and Tether, so basically the altcoins. And you can see here how this lines up. We flipped positive here. And you can also see here how this, uh, it's follow, it, the altcoin market basically follows the psychology of a market almost perfectly. You can see here it lines up like almost exactly. And where we are here right now, and I, I definitely feel like that, let me know in the comments below if you feel like we're here in this kind of I think we definitely all found some hope recently, right, this year. And then you have had the correction post having, and now we're in this kind of chop sideways zone here, between this, these zones here. And after that, you know what happens. Well, let's hope so. Uh, I want to get into something, though, real quick that blew my mind. Uh, I saw, I can't believe this is the first time I saw this speech. Um, and I watched the whole thing, and I will leave a link in the description below. I'm thinking about making an entire video and just uh, later, maybe for the weekend or something, uh, walking you through this entire speech. But it's mind blowing to me, and I think you should go watch it. So let's just listen to one segment here. Uh, it's very, very important. For instance, the financial situation of the United States. When I talk to my conservative friends right here, they always tell me that the problem is high taxes, but they're wrong. Of course, high taxes are extremely high here in the United States. I, I give you that. You're right in that. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is not the high taxes themselves. 
but the fact that they are not even really funding the government. Not even those high taxes, higher than a lot of places in the world, not even those taxes are really funding the government. So who's financing the government? Government is financed by treasury bonds, paper. And who buys the treasury bonds? Mostly the Fed. And how does the Fed buy them? By printing money. But what backing does the Fed have for that money being printed? The treasury bonds themselves. So basically, you finance the government by printing money out of thin air. Someone could ask, someone could ask, well, so if the government can print the limited amounts of money out of thin air, why do they collect taxes? I mean, in theory, it would make sense, right? If they can print unlimited amounts of money, why would they need taxes for? The answer is simple, but it's very shocking. The real problem is that you pay high taxes only to uphold the illusion that you are funding the government, which you are not. And, that's, and that is the, the scary truth. And he can explain it, articulate it so well how this whole Ponzi works. When I was watching, like this, this is just a fraction of the, the truth bombs that are set off in this speech and uh, I couldn't believe that he was on American soil talking about all this stuff, like talking about George Soros and the elites and what's actually going on in the world and how he's turned his country around. It's, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, President Bukale from uh, El Salvador. Um, really, really impressive. Now, uh, on the contrast, let's listen to the... Uh, you, might, you guys might, might not see this already, but it's definitely worth another watch if you haven't. If you haven't, you're in for a treat. This is Jared Bernstein is a chair of Council of Economic Advisors for Biden. So he's Biden's economic go-to guy. And let's just let's listen to his his uh, The U.S. Here. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. It obviously begs the question, why exactly are we borrowing in a currency that we print ourselves? I'm waiting for someone to stand up and say, why do we borrow our own currency in the first place? Like you said, they print the dollar. So why, why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets, some of the language that the MM, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? <laughs> they, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, yeah. right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times, at least to my ear with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I, don't, I can't really talk, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about, like, because it's like, <laughs> the government clearly prints money, it does it all the time, Obviously. and it clearly borrows, no. otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation, so. I don't think there's anything confusing there. No, not at all confusing. It's super clear. You can just walk us through that one more time, uh, Mr. Biden's economic advisor. Oh. But, and, and you, you know, some of you guys might say that's like just the United States. Of course, like they're just dumb over there. But you would be wrong if you just thought it was the United States only. Let's uh, listen to Europe's head of the... Money is very ECB. simple. We create money... Uh, electronically, if I can say, uh, we uh, credit accounts of, well, that, that people will not understand again. Uh, <laughs> no, you, guys, I, you guys won't understand. 
you, you don't you don't you couldn't possibly understand this complex modern monetary policy. I mean, you small brains don't don't understand what this giga brain Chad is about to say here. It's an image, you know. So I mean, this is off now. Huh? Uh, <laughs> this is I could say I agree. I... That this 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 we're not recording. Wait, wait, wait. We are. Wait, we are recording. No. It's recording. Oh. I print banknotes, but it's an image. You know, it's not the way we do because it goes via the banking system. Uh, so. Um, but couldn't you? Couldn't yeah, how, how would you say I that? Mean, we, because we, we lent. We lent money. No, but lend, lend. No, no, it's it's not wealth. It's, it's, no, we uh, create it's, money. It's yes, it's not yes, lending yeah, money. No, we give create me a money. Give me a second. Yeah. We yeah. lend to commercial banks, and true, the, no, the, not true. the 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 the, <laughs> the, no, no. the the moment of of this lending creates the money. No, no, but, that, no, 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 no. I see what you mean, money. but it's not even true what you say. When you let me let me give the uh, we are not. Uh, no, that's the classical way. Nobody is going to understand what you say. But the, normally, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's, I would just... Basically, what he was saying is that nobody would understand fractional reserve banking because what the other guy was saying was that when they give money to the banks and they lend it out, that creates money also because if I give the bank $100 and they only have to keep 10% in fractional reserve banking, which is another way to create money out of thin air, they can go and then create, uh, go, go lend out $90 of that $100 and that's 90 new dollars that people have to pay back. But where does that money come from? Because it, does, it didn't exist in the first place. So they, like, this is how it, we, have, we live in a cycle of constant debt. But he's, you, guys, you guys wouldn't understand that. It's way too complicated for, for you. Think about the situation. I print banknotes. I just, in my office, I print banknotes. And with these banknotes, I will buy you something. And I, I give you this banknote and you give me a bond that you have bought before. Mm. You have a, a shots, you know, you have a, a treasury bill, you know, in your investment. Mm -hmm. or, uh, and then you, you sell it to me mm -hmm. and I give you cash, which I have produced. Uh -huh. But we do that electronically. But it's, yeah, it's, it's future, digital. Don't worry, guys. It's all under control. Uh, if you aren't aware, you guys can always have fun over here at usdebtclock.org. Uh, this is... We're, we, we've printed essentially, uh, we're printing 100, uh, uh, every 100 days, a trillion dollars. And if you want to see the, we've, we've covered this before in a different format, the USD uh, versus Bitcoin chart. Um, this is the purchasing power of the dollar over time. You can see this looks like a rug pull. It is essentially a rug pull, but this is why it's going to zero. And this is why you need to protect your assets. And this is why, for me personally, I choose to take profits from my more degenerate and altcoin investments, the ones that uh, yeah that I'm taking profits from, and I buy more Bitcoin. I've always valued, well, not always, but since 2013, I've valued my wealth in Bitcoin and always have used that as my form of store of value, essentially. Uh, and I, this is this is really interesting too. I saw this and then I elaborated on it. So, in 2015, a $250,000 house would have cost 1,225 Bitcoin. And you can see as it goes on through the years from inflation, that house is now worth almost double. Okay, 2X, great. But it only costs 8.9 Bitcoin to buy this house, right? The same house before would have, would have cost 1,225. So a lot less. What do you, what, where do you want to store your, your value? But this isn't even the craziest part. The craziest part, someone's, okay, so if you're looking at buying the house, like, and this really makes me, like, I, well, it's, just, it's a reminder that, like, hey, anyone want to buy a villa in Thailand? <laughs> I'll sell you mine. Um, uh, anyway, so, uh, the, 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 so I, I, I tweeted this out, right? This is crazy. Uh, but, but you know what's insane? In 2015, you could have bought 1,220 Bitcoin for about $250,000, or you could have bought the house. Right. Today, that Bitcoin would be worth seventy-eight point four million dollars, or you could have bought the house <laughs> and sold it for five hundred eighty thousand if you wanted to. What? Are you kidding me? Who? Who? How could you even like, like? And and this has been going on for like fifteen years since Bitcoin. They, and people think this is just going to stop. All of a sudden, no, no. The same will continue. We have. 
a small percentage of the world now has adopted Bitcoin. It's you're still early. I, like I, I just I, I don't know if I'm stressing this enough to my regular viewers. If you're new here, I go down this rabbit hole a lot, but I think it's important to know and and never forget because I think a lot of other YouTubers and accounts always talk about how Bitcoin's boring and blah blah blah. And while it might not might not go as much and pump as hard in a bull run, it is the thing that I know that's going to be around in the next 50 years. It is the thing that I know that will be a world reserve uh, store of value at the very least, probably even maybe uh, the actual, people don't want to say it these days because uh, it's mainstream is a bit, but it probably will be some sort of peer-to-peer -peer digital currency too, hopefully, if they evolve you know, with layer twos and like, yeah, for sure people will be spoiling. And people make the argument all the time, well, why is no one spending it? Like, well, because it's still in its adoption phase, right? But one day, Bitcoin will be much less interesting from an appreciation perspective, and it'll be more like gold or something, where or or, or current, well, not a currency, because it, well, maybe maybe U.S. dollars for a while, right? But like, it will be more stable when it has sufficiently been adopted around the globe. It will be at, I don't know. $10 million or something per Bitcoin, or maybe even more because US, if you price in US dollars, it might be like for a hundred million because US dollars is going to, well, you saw. But so certainly, and where do you put your, your store of wealth? Like it's, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the trick right there. So anyway, you can see here the, the old uh, bull markets after having, they look like this and we're here right now. Bah! This is like not extremely realistic for these expectations of this chart, by the way. It just puts it in perspective, just the scale here isn't very accurate. Like, you know, are we, I mean, we will eventually get up to, you know, somewhere around here, I think, but this cycle maybe it's just not a good scale. But anyway, it still has the effect <laughs> I think of for. So today, uh, about maybe like 12, 13 hours ago, we saw the markets were pumping and it gave us insight to, to what was going on. But now we have a little bit of correction, which is good because we got a bit of a sneak peek into where the attention is again, and that is AI. Before we get into the AI, sec the, the AI and altcoin segment, I'm gonna tell you a little bit here about where we are again in the cycle. Again, why I'm quite bullish here that any, literally any day, it could be days, or it could be a, a couple of weeks, few weeks maybe, maybe even, it could even be a, a couple of months, right? But we are close to, alt season. And like certain narratives have had their own independent alt season, like AI and memes, for example, this summer undoubtedly will be an AI season and probably memes. And so we'll definitely cover both of them. Um, but that's, I'm going to show, I'm gonna show you why uh, AI is going to be the dominant narrative in the entire world right now. If you guys aren't obsessing with AI tools like I am right now to how to use them, um, then maybe you're not paying attention to how crazy this is getting. So I made another post here saying, AI summer is coming. Don't say you haven't been warned. How do I know this? Study the recovery. AI coins are recovering fastest. This was made earlier today when, I, when markets were pumping and showing us, showing us their true colors of what's to come. NVIDIA earnings in two weeks, AI sector volume growth and top performance the past 24 hours are AI coins. The narrative is right in your face. And if you look here at the month to date narratives, AI is the most when it comes to mind share. And that's Dune Analytics, which has some uh, data from, from areas. And then this, uh, this is Kaito, which I use all the time. And if you look at you know, the narrative over the past uh, forever, right? it's been AI, 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 the top of the charts. And so if you look at the tokens within the AI segment, uh, you can see here some of them, and we'll, we'll go into some of them today, some of the ones that I want to talk about, some of the ones that I've positions in, or the, or the more, got my, my kind of opinions on some of the more popular ones, and, uh, and some alternatives to those, I, yeah, so some like beta plays, essentially. So what are, the, what are the, remember, we've talked about this before, narratives and catalysts. We know now what the narrative is. What are the catalysts that are going to send these things into Valhalla? We know that when ChatGPT came out, bam. We know that when Sora came out, bam. And 
I'm going to lay out for you here the catalysts that are going to make this summer the summer of AI. So we know NVIDIA reports their earnings on May 22nd. People expect this to be very, very bullish. Uh, we know they still dominate the GPU market. I am curious to see how this develops over time, but for our concerns, meaning the, the immediate markets for the next year or so, this, is, this matters. We also have the uh, Worldwide Developer Conference from Apple on the June 10th, so May 22nd, and then a few weeks later, June 10th, another catalyst, because we're expecting to see a lot of AI in, their, in Apple's new products. It's gonna be dominated by that, I'm sure. And Microsoft and OpenAI to build a $100 billion data center project. It's, they're actually building a supercomputer, which they called Star, Stargate. Project, Project Stargate, yeah, it's really called Stargate. I don't know if that's like dystopian or if it's like awesome, both maybe, I guess, uh, which is ironic. So Amazon is also getting into the, like you, I, I guess you couldn't just expect Amazon to just sit back and watch everybody else get into the game. Like Jeff Bezos, come on. You know, Elon goes to space, Jeff goes to space. Elon builds, uh, Elon builds uh, uh, AI, Jeff builds AI. You know how it works. And ChatGPT, of course, people are looking forward to this. And we've heard Sam Altman uh, talk a lot about how ChatGPT4 uh, Chat right now is going to be the dumbest AI that you'll ever have to use. Inferring that when we use GPT-5, it will, yeah, it will make the current GPTs that we have right now feel like, like special education class. Um, well, and then of course you've got Meta, Meta, uh, Zuck, he's not going to step down either. He's, you know, and, and he got lucky that the, uh, the, 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 metaverse narrative will eventually come back. Um, uh, I'm pretty confident in that, but, uh, you know, Zuck bought these like crazy super graphics cards from NVIDIA that are very rare and super expensive. He bought them for the rendering of the metaverse and end up being able to use them for, uh, and they're like, like in high demand, like most of these companies can't get them, even these big guys. And so he kind of got a, a head start on that graphics processing power, hopefully puts it to good use. But I know that they're gaining traction fast, this Llama 3. And Zuck, I saw in another interview recently, he talked about the fact that he's going to produce AGI. It's not, not a matter of if, if, just when, and probably, I don't know, he sounded very confident in it. And then he's gonna open source it to the world. I'm not going to get dystopian on this channel. That's not what it's about, but I, maybe we will, we will have a conversation uh, one of these days about P-Doom and uh, AI. It is, it is a concerning to me. But, um, but anyway, uh, if, if our species is wiped off the face of the planet by AI, let's at least get really rich and have a lot of fun before that happens. We have a few years at least, I think. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, decentralized AI at the top of the crypto narrative and it comes seven day relative strength. And of course, like take anything mainstream and throw decentralized in it and you have market pump. And you, if you watch the channel enough, you'll kind of see my, how I feel about different projects and, and what they're doing. I, I would say that just a, a piece of advice here is that it's hard because like, there's projects out there that I know are scams, and, but people either don't care or, you know, and I, I don't really know how to, to, to talk about this, right? Because, like, do you buy something that you know is going to pump because it's got a good narrative and you got influencers on it and stuff like that? I mean, yes, you can do that if your goal is to make money, and which we all are here to do, uh, but... I don't know. Anyway, that anyway, this is a my own kind of ethical and moral debate. But uh, but I would say check to see how long this project's been around. Check to see if the if the founders are docs. Check to see if there's any code. Check to see if they're a product. Um, you know, when did they start building and this kind of things. So we have a bit of an opportunity here, though. Like I said, this video is about before the pump, and in the last thirty days. We've had a nice cooling off from the AI narrative. It is going to come back, obviously, very soon for the reasons that we just talked about. But if you go to the AI section under categories here and, uh, and you scroll down, you will see here that 
uh, you've had a lot of 30, over the past 30 days, we've had a lot of uh, correction here, a lot of, a lot of discounted AI tokens, and this whole sector is going to pump like hell over the next few weeks, most likely, not financial advice, but you can see here, guys, big, big, big discounts. So, I can't, I, I, like, go shopping, go, go see what you, what you like, do some research and check out the ones that you like. I'm going to tell you right now which ones, and, you know, anyway, so BitTensor, as you guys know, or may not know, I don't know, but, like, it had a crazy meteoric, meteoric rise in the last kind of AI hype cycle. And I think that was like around Sora time and it got to $728. Now this thing grew organically forever, right? Like it launched, I think this chart doesn't even go back to when it was launched, but like you can see that, yeah, it was, and we started talking about it quite early too, but I, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't go into it. Um, but anyway, it, it's, it is, I still don't quite understand what they do, um, but I also don't hold a bag of it, but uh, we do know that it was $728 around the peak, and it's got a nice correction of 442 right now. I think last time we really talked about it was around 660 bucks or something, so quite a big discount. So NetMind, essentially just like the Chinese version of BitTau, or Bit, BitTensor, Tau, and you can see it's a much better valuation where BitTensor is at 3 billion, almost 10 billion fully diluted. Over here, you've got less than a billion fully diluted, almost a quarter quarter billion uh, circulating. So take that for what you will. I also don't have any net mine tokens myself. And this one was in the research uh, from the research team today. I, in the briefing, I didn't ask why. I, I didn't even think about it. I just, maybe I wasn't paying attention or something, but I thought, so, so when I, after the brief, I, I, I opened the, the kind of all these things and started thinking about this one here. And I said, well, I don't really know too much about the zero one, so let me, let me go, but it, it's also now 6 a.m., so I shouldn't have spent so much time doing this, maybe just excluded it, but I did want to walk you through the process of something that was shared with me, obviously because it's gaining some traction, some mind share, some, some attention, and so I wanted to, I just dove into it a little bit to find out, I, I, I didn't want to, not that I'm promoting anything on this channel, I'm just telling you guys about things, but... I don't want to even really talk about something that I didn't know too much about. And so I still don't know too much about it, but I, I walk you through a little bit of what I did quickly to try to figure out, to see if I, I could find anything that was either a big red flag or something that said, yeah, this is, really looks great. So, so far I, I couldn't find anything. And now keep this in mind, and if you're the zero one laps team and you want to reach out and you guys, you know, anything I say here is incorrect or in the comments, if I say anything correct, forgive me. But um, just from quick observation, my, my, my 15 minute scan through this thing, I went, it seems to have a lot of nice hype words. It seems to have some sort of like incubation or launchpad program for AI. And it seems to be some sort of layer one or something like that um, that's doing, you know, AI stuff, right? And what I really wanted to see was, is there is there a GitHub? No, I can't find a GitHub. And is there, let's see, is this, no. And then even when I went to the documents, I, I, I looked at like everything. I went to zero one docs. I checked the documents. I looked for, you know, all this stuff I look through, I, I, you know, all you could find is just like, it's just descriptions about things. Uh, now, granted, I didn't, I didn't do full dive and everything again, uh, but from what I, the things I did, I did click on, it doesn't seem like anything's actionable right now. So you can see here, it says become a validator, but I can't actually become a validator right now. Uh, <coughs> you can stake your token, but you don't, there's no main net to stake it on. So, so it is what it is. And so what I wanted to do then is I wanted to come say, okay, well, is there a team that I can, I can check out, you know? And so I did, I went to check out the team and the team is, so they come from a, mostly uh, IdeaSoft, which is like a software company, um, fairly well known, fairly successful, but uh, they're all seem to be part-time and the CEO is anonymous, uh, which, okay, it's fine. Like, I'm, you know, but I went and clicked on the rest of these links on LinkedIn and, and all the other people that are listed here and one's just an advisor, so they're definitely not working on it uh, full-time at all. But the other three here are also part, part-time part and Herman is a is an interim C, CTO, doesn't invalidate anything, doesn't mean that he's it's not, it's not great, but it also means that he's not dedicated to the project and uh, and these other two are also have other jobs that they're working on. So to me that that's concerning, but 
also I can't see any significant funding for this. So if they're just bootstrapping it in the interim and like doing, yeah, who knows at this point, but for me, I would like to see a bit more before I go into it. What did I just close? I don't know what I just closed. Ah, just the team still. Okay, so now let's get into some other things that I'm quite bullish on. If you don't know, based AI, guys, I'm incredibly bullish on this one. Uh, I've, if you don't know already, it's one of my biggest investments in the space on the secondary market. And, I mean, just period. And you have this nice correction over here. You can see forever. I, I didn't. Even, I can't even believe how long this went back. All the way back, it looks like the first day of trading was around the 16th of June. And then we started talking about it somewhere over here, I believe. And uh, and then it had this crazy rally up afterwards. And and uh, and then you have this big correction down here, which is normal after you have this huge green thing. And now what we see is this. It's probably gonna maybe chop sideways for a little bit. But with this AI narrative, you can it's, it might it might not chop. Sorry, it might explode uh, in this AI narrative. Now, price is down. Does that mean that the tech is sucks and, and things? That, no, it doesn't. Uh, there, like there's a test net live. You, if you if you're a developer, you know a developer. Please have them go check out the test net and get some feedback. And uh, also some of the tech, the AI is actually being trained right now uh, for Pepe Coin. So I. I encourage everyone to go do their own due diligence and go check it out. There's plenty of stuff to read, the white paper. Uh, I've done a video on that before and uh, on based AI and Pepe coin and not, not the Pepe that most of you guys think about, but uh, if you know me, then it's the, the OG Pepe coin, but go check out this video if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's, it's from over a month ago. Uh, it looks like this. It's like, like buying Tao at $10. So go check it out. And, uh, and so, on the topic of AI, uh, now we have a chance to earn, like an airdrop in a way, the AI model that's going to train Kekbot, which is a, a trading bot on Telegram. And I also thought this was quite interesting. Let me just jump back here to the Dune Analytics here. You can see that in the seven day, uh, last seven day of, of, of narratives, the most popular is Telegram bots. Telegram bots? AI? Memes? What? <laughs> it's like... They, they, it's like, like this team could see into the future and see what everyone was going to want and then have built it right in time. Okay, Render. So everyone loves Render. I, full disclosure, I am a uh, early equity and token investor in Render. Um, I invested in like 2016 or something like that, 17. Uh, good project, good company, um, but quite high valuation. So I don't hold any Render tokens anymore. I still have my investment from the early days in the equity side. Um, but uh, we can look at alternatives. Now, I'll talk about AOs in a uh, let, Let's talk, well, anyway. AOs is a, does everything that Render does, and then a whole lot more. I've made videos talking mostly about AOs before. I've been a long-term supporter of AOs. Uh, we launched them on Paid Network, and you have a nice little pullback here. I mean, it's not huge, uh, but recently we had this go all the way up to a dollar oh three, and now you've got a pullback of, like 27% or something like that. Uh, so good entry here, especially since you see something. And if you notice that pretty much all the tokens are in circulation, and so you're not gonna have any crazy VC dumps or any more inflation happening, really. I mean, the protocol has a little bit of inflation, but not from VCs and advisors and all that stuff. So in my opinion, great opportunity here. Uh, yes, I, I still have a big bag of AOs. And then Node AI, so we have a couple of sponsors here. Node AI is one of the sponsors, but of course it fits perfectly in here to this narrative. Again, similar concept to what Render is doing. One of the things that AOS does is this distributed GPU for, for AI kind of narrative, this deep end narrative, which is popping off one of the most popular narratives. And you can see here at a very reasonable 141 million in, uh, market cap, and basically 100% of the coins are in circulation or just a small fraction of them that are not. I mean, like a couple hundred thousand dollars. They're basically all in circulation. So again, you don't have to worry about dumps or anything like that's happening. And you can see powering the, next, the demand for next-gen AI. Um, and it seems like it, it's it's still quite small and new. And that's the, re the market cap, I guess, reflects that. There's 100 GPUs, 20 active nodes, and they're make, but they are making $507,000 a month in revenue, and they are sharing that with stakers and ETH, by the way. So... Uh, crypto plug says the strongest narrative in crypto this year has been AI and don't think that changes anytime soon. We know that. 
GPU is my strongest conviction in that sector for good reason. The team has been working relentlessly to deliver value to holders. Layer one blockchain tailored for tasks of distribution across nodes. Network now powered by 400 GPUs. Okay, 400 with 7,000 rental hours. Nice. 33,000 holders up. Stake to earn ETH. Revenue sharing for holders and rent and lend GPU space. And of course, there's this comp competitive analysis. This is always biased toward whatever project. You know, you, you have to understand that. But it gives you uh, some perspective on everything that it can do and the potential uh, for GPU here. So pretty interesting uh, project there. And Koi, something that uh, our fund has invested into as well, is absolutely skyrocketing. You can see they have... That's actually more than that, but uh, it's it's so Koi is a fork of Solana modified for Dpin. You can see right now there's 66,496 nodes online, which is insane. Uh, 66,000, almost 67,000 people running nodes. Like very impressive network growth. Again, it's a fork of Solana. Everything that Solana does, all the updates, Fire Dancer, all that will be applicable to Koi, but they've made modifications again for the deep end side of things. And a lot of people are actually already using uh, Koi Network to run AI things, to run other tasks, whatever people need uh, distributed compute for. Now, what Koi is doing right now is they're doing these 30 days of airdrops, quite clever. And so every day, if you're, if you're running a node, you're getting airdrops. They dropped yesterday, it looks like uh, Tensor. And then uh, they did uh, Helium before that. And then before that, they did Whiff and Bonk. And, uh, and so in Jupiter, so pretty cool. There's run a node and you're getting, you're getting uh, an airdrop in Koi tokens as well for running your nodes. And, and it, it, it costs you nothing basically to run it, like nothing pretty much, some computer space and some, some, a little bit of electricity, but pretty much nothing. And it takes like less than five minutes to set up. Just go to koi.network, get the node. It walks you through. You, there's a, uh, they have a YouTube channel too, which very clearly shows you how to do it. It's, takes less than five minutes to set up a node, have it running, get your airdrops, and watch out for some big announcements coming soon with Koi as well. And last one is Palm, guys. And uh, you've probably heard a lot of people talking about it for good reason. Uh, we made a video on this a while back and Palm reached out to us and said, hey, do you guys want to try it out? And so, uh, of course I want to. So right now we're in the process of integrating Palm AI into our Telegram community. And so if you're in the VVIP group, then you'll see how it works firsthand. But I wanted to t test it out as well and see what kind of value I got from it. And there's a lot of good reasons to use uh, AI assistance. So I've been very bullish on the AI agents, essentially. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I'm excited to see uh, Palm come out. And then we will eventually uh, test it first in the VVIP community. And then we'll test it in the, the paid network community and the Commonwealth community. And they're, they're getting a lot of traction and they're sharing revenue with uh, the stakers as well in ETH. So, so far, they've distributed... Three hundred forty thousand uh, dollars and sixty-two point two nine percent of the circulating supply in the program, so very good. And they have, they are getting other traction as well. So they've got some partnerships with uh, C Miner and also one with uh, with Snack, which is aiming to be the essentially uh, the the crypto version of Linktree, which. I use Linktree in the bio of my X account. Maybe I should go try out Snack. All right, guys, that's going to it for tonight. 